Welcome, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to today's City Club Forum. My name is Ralph Delarada, and I've got the great pleasure of being the president of the City Club of Cleveland this year. The City Club of Cleveland was established in October of 1912. And the City Club since that time has served as one of the nation's premier public podiums for civic dialogue, covering truly the most important topics of our time. We are fortunate to draw on guest speakers from a variety of backgrounds and fields. These speakers, uh, we provide rather a national forum for these speakers. All of these individuals are rich in experience and knowledge, and they are here to help spur discussion and learning most importantly learning amongst the citizens of Cleveland as well as our wider national audience. I'm so pleased today to announce that our guest is Deborah Daggett, a widely recognized leader in corporate and workplace diversity. Deborah serves it as Merck and Company's Chief Diversity Officer. She initiated and leads the company's global constituency group strategy, which comprises 10 global teams with members spanning 32 countries. Each team represents a different element of the company's diverse backgrounds and is made up of 15 to 20 talented senior leaders who have developed innovative strategies for diversity at the company. Her responsibilities include promoting inclusion and diversity, ensuring global equal employment opportunity compliance, sustaining a world-class work environment, and, development, and developing and implementing employee relations strategies. And that's a mouthful. That's a lot of work. Deborah joined Merck in 2001 as executive director of the Diversity and Work Environment Department. Perhaps not so coincidentally, Merck has been in the Diversity Inc. top 50 companies for diversity since 2003. The company is now known for being a top employer for executive women and people with disabilities, with human capital being its strongest asset. She's a working mother, and the human rights campaign have also, I'm sorry, working mother and the human rights campaign have also recognized Merck for its exemplary work in diversity and inclusion under Deborah's leadership. As Deborah points out, diversity is about more than simply providing the same opportunities to all members of society. Furthermore, diversity creates value through synergies and different experiences knowledge and backgrounds that contribute to business performance and ultimately enhance shareholder value. So we bring it right back to the end to shareholder value. Now what Deborah has done over 20 years is impressive. As a diversity leader, she has advanced disability causes as well as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender causes in the workplace. She played a key role in the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act and has implemented domestic partner benefits in three companies. Before joining Merck, Deborah worked at Silicon Graphics, Inc., where she served as Director of Learning Communications and Diversity. She also worked as a Senior management Manager of Strategic Cultural Initiatives for Sun Microsystems. She additionally founded Bridge to Jobs, a job placement organization through which she personally placed 400 people with disabilities into permanent employment. She has earned many prestigious awards, including the 2005 Champion of the Year Award from Out and Equal and the 2004 Employee of the Year Award from Careers and the Disabled Magazine, among others. And I love the way they put that disabled, but abled is in caps, not to be lost on us. Deborah earned a bachelor's degree with honors from Oregon State University and has completed her master's degree in clinical psychology at San Jose State University. She's authored books including The Promise of Diversity, Reflections on the Not-So-Level Playing Field, and as well as Employers, An Employer's Guide to Hiring and Accommodating People with Disabilities. Deborah's married and has three children in the early teens, so I guess she is a working mother, yes. And uh, it is a pleasure, really, to introduce such an accomplished and respected leader. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Deborah Daggett to the City Club today. And thank you for this wonderful accommodation with this great podium. 
I'm uh, really, truly honored to be here in Cleveland, especially at such a renowned venue as the City Club. It is a privilege to take part in such an important forum like this, where new ideas and open exchange are so welcomed. As I prepared to be with you today, I came across a recent editorial in the Cleveland Plain Dealer. It was noting how your city is facing one of its worst crises in its storied history. To ensure the community's survival, the editorial said, will require strategic thinking. Doing no nothing to change the situation will hurt the city and its citizens more. This really resonated with me. Merck, the company I've worked for since 2001, is facing its own set of challenges that require plenty of strategic thinking and new ideas to help us reshape and re-engineer our business for a new time. The world is changing tremendously. I think we can all see that. We certainly all saw it earlier when President-elect Obama took the stage in Chicago, surrounded by thousands of people representing men and women of different races, ages, faiths, and abilities, while people from every corner of the globe watched via satellite and the internet. Like many of you, we know at Merck that merely standing still and reminiscing about the good old days will accomplish very little. In fact, we know that doing things the same way and expecting a different outcome will hurt our company, our employees, and citizens around the world who depend on the many vital medicines and vaccines Merck is responsible for providing. As one of the world's leading pharmaceutical companies, we, like the industry to which we belong, face an unusual set of challenges. And like you, we also are trying to navigate successfully through the current choppy economic waters that could potentially continue to disrupt many industries for months and years to come. However, unlike others, Merck is more prepared to come out the other end stronger than ever because of the solid, patient-centered foundation our company is built upon and the aggress aggressive efforts of our leaders through our 2005 aptly named Plan to Win to prepare Merck for long-term success in this rapidly changing global business environment. I really want to stress the word global here. While we are based in a beautiful rural section of New Jersey, I see deer out my window every day. Um, and yes, New Jersey is more than a strip of asphalt between Washington, D.C. and New York. <laughs> Merck is truly a global pharmaceutical research company. We have a little more than 55,000 employees, about half of whom are located outside the United States in 144 countries and territories. And today, approximately half of our revenue also comes from outside the U.S. The diversity of these employees, no matter where they call home, is perhaps our biggest advantage. The truth is, diversity and inclusion are more than mere words at Merck. They are woven into the fabric of the company's culture and how we do business. We know that to meet our long-term objectives, Merck must collaborate with diverse groups of people and organizations and leverage their collective knowledge and their social networking power with the know-how, scale, and financial strength Merck possesses to develop and discover important new medicines and vaccines and distribute them effectively around the world no matter how remote the location. <coughs> the business reality is the U.S. pharmaceutical market the world's largest, is forecast to only grow a mere 1 to 2 percent, both this year and next. This is according to data released earlier this month by IMS Health. Forecasters cite lower demand for branded pharmaceuticals and the weak economy's apparent impact on doctor visits and pharmaceutical sales is the reason for this. By comparison, 